Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Phantoms Youth 4v4 Tournament of 2023. Tonight, this will be one of two games involving 16 AA. Similar to the Spring League games I did back in May and June, I do not have full roster sheets. Actually, to correct myself, I have no roster sheets tonight, so you are going to hear nothing but numbers, occasionally hearing the typical name of a player if I'm able to recognize them with the naked eye. One of many games in these tournaments for mainly for these players is to get ready for this upcoming season in the Atlantic Hockey Federation and Phantoms Youth. It appears to be Duncan Mitchelltree that will go for the faceoff for Team Black against Team Orange, who's wearing number 22. And we are underway. It's Team Orange and Team Black. Six. We'll make a left wing pass away for 52 to lost it for the defense of 49. So these are these are a lot shorter condensed games. These will only be a 26 minute game here in this full rink here at Steel Ice Center in these 4v4 tournaments. Last year, well, I did a few of those games for Phantoms. It was actually half rinks, but this year is a full rink. Here's a wrist shot that goes high over the glass. The chance came from Ethan Meyer, the forward for the Southern Lehigh Spartans. He's a sophomore this year, had not had a not so bad freshman year as well. And so Tia Orange will take a shot from the right corner that will float right over the net towards the high glass. Puck comes right away back to the corner of six. Trying to throw one there for 52, but he couldn't get the puck on his blade and goes past the line. Fanning on the play there was 20, and neutral ice gains the puck back. As he goes past the blue line, trap takes a slap shot from long range as that flex into the goaltender's pads as he will hold on, and we will continue shortly. Off this face, off one defensively by Team Black. It goes back towards the corner. Flicked there towards 39. It goes right to Team Black's goaltender as he holds on. Like I was saying earlier, I apologize. I do not have names for this game, so I'm sorry if the calling of numbers isn't too informative, but I'm using what I have. As this shot goes off the backboards behind the goal. So these, this 4v4 tournament for Phantoms Youth is not just an opportunity to get a sense of community together for the hockey in the Lehigh Valley and in Bethlehem, PA, but also to get these players warmed up for the upcoming season. Here's a backhand shot by 47 that goes wide of the goal. 31 retrieves it out of the zone. Here's a wrist shot off the pads there of Team Orange's goalie wearing number 80. Kept on the line. Team Black will continue on the offense. 64, fanned on the play off the boards as his knuckle puck just goes over the line and this will be an offsides. A few things I wanted to mention. First of all, another reason. Like one, first of all, one of the big reasons I am actually doing some of these Phantom Youth games is, well, I am leaving for Kutztown University one week from today, um, which will be on Friday, the 25th of August. I'll be leaving to move into my dorm in Kutztown University, and I just want to take this chance to film some hockey in the Lehigh Valley and at least see some of my fans. One last time before I head on out to continue further journeys in my life. So that's a big reason why I'm here tonight, and I hope you guys enjoyed my content here over the last year. And, I, of course, I hope you enjoyed this game here tonight. 49. Will gain control on the defensive side. He gets taken down there on the boards, and there's no arms up in the air. They're going to say that's a clean play as this puck goes off the side of the boards. So again, it's only a one period game. There's 23 minutes and counting left in it. And back up Team Black the other way. It's a nearly one on one. A player for Team Black stumbles down. No call in front as the player for Team Black. I can't see his number, unfortunately, at this time, but he was seen, he seemed to have a pretty big grin on his face on that. I believe that was Tanner Alt. Brother of Ryder Alt, both playing for the Northampton Concrete Kids. The LVSHL varsity and JV champs of 2023. This is flipped back over to the zone of 64. That's Duncan Mitchelltree. Makes a no-look pass, but it's intercepted by 52. 46 tried to chip it away. And a nice feed made by McNally goes to 75. 75 is good. 12 right good front. Trying to get a centering pass, but it goes back to the left point instead. 35 kept it on side. As 57's going to roam on his way out towards center ice. 
He's going past the blue line. Now he goes through it. 57 trying to get her under the fence, but he lost control of the puck. Cleared back the other way as T. Martins will chase for it, and this will be an icing. In the summer, intercepting back comes Steve Block. He moves 49, lost control, and he scores! 49, and it's one to nothing, Team Black. 20 minutes, 26 seconds and counting remaining. It's a, It appears they're going to let the clock run even on goals. Maybe even they were letting it run during whistles. But regardless, it is one to nothing. Finally, the first goal of the night. The other thing I wanted to briefly mention, rest in peace to one of, the, if not arguably, the greatest play-by-play -play announcer of all time and the longtime announcer of the Buffalo Sabres for 51 season, Rick Generate, as Team Black scores again, number 47, and it's two to nothing. But as I was getting back to the conversation, Rick Generate, the longtime announcer of the Buffalo Sabres, passed away as of last night. He was 81 years old. Such a genuine human being. I actually made a video about him not too long ago. It's done really well to tribute him. And one thing I wanted to talk about is how Generate, not only has been one of my favorite announcers, but how much he's affected me as a person and as an announcer. As Team Martin scores there, it's 52. I'll try to hurry this up so I don't miss any more goals. But for Generate, one of the biggest aspects on his announcing style that really influenced me is his overall enthusiastic personality on the mic. He was incredible on what he did for that. And I decided, you know what, I'm not trying to imitate him, but by taking Generate's style, it kind of showed me how they have a lot of fun with announcing games. And to see him pass away is just such a sad thing for the city of Buffalo, and quite honestly, myself. And one thing I actually want to show you guys is that I have decided to, I have decided to, uh, decided to honor Generate by putting him on my headset there. You can see it says Rick Generate. It's like a little version of his banner that the Sabres put up last season. And I just keep that there just to remind myself on a big reason why I'm doing games today and just to honor him. So rest in peace to the great Rick Generate. But with all that said, it is now two to one team. Black team, black at two goals. But now Team Orange has cut the lead in half. They have not updated the scoreboard. It just says no score, but I can tell you what it is. It's two to one right now. Comes back in front as 52 will try to rush the other way. Six with speed running into two defenders. Could he get a shot away as he's going to get it back there for 75. Escaping the zone there, it's 34. Lost, nearly lost his balance as he lost the puck as well, trying to chase Ford back. T Barnes resets. A little less than 17 minutes to go in the game. It is two to one. Team Black is six. Will make a nice play. He's going right to the net. Save rebound. And that second shot did not. I actually though, I thought there was a second shot there based on this perspective. The puck was actually a little further away from him than I expected as it was cleared back out. 35 makes the deke around 49 as he's going to wait behind the goal. That's pressure of defenders trying to take the puck from him as it comes back out. There is, there is Garrett Wolf. Phantoms use goaltender. Meanwhile, here comes Team Black on a two on one. They're going to leave it in front there for all. Oh, and a nice save is made by Team Orange's goaltender. 80 with the right shoulder flexing it out. But the offense will seemingly continue on. Chip back towards the slot, but this will be an offside. Off the tie up on the onside dot. It's won by Team Black as they'll try to get it past the line. And now that's Landon McCray with a nice pass to 46. I can tell it's Landon McCray because I know what he looks like, and he's got the number 41 on his helmet, which is what he wore with the Bethlehem Area School District this year. 47 is looking for some help, trying to bang it off the boards toward the point, but it goes past the line. 57. Over it. As he has it near the... Point as he's going to move to the circle. 57 centering pass tipped in front towards the goal, but it goes wide. Now the scoreboard has been updated. Two to one, Team Black right now. 64 backhands it into the zone, but 82 for Orange. I'll give it back there for 46. 46. Todrick wrist shot goes wide. Seemed to have a lot of power to it, but not enough accuracy, and that's what really counts on that play. 
Here comes T Block on a 2 on 2. 47. Nice play made by 82 for Orange to get out of harm's way with a good defensive stick, but is nearly kept into the zone. And now it's 75 at center ice. 75. Loses it. 46 gets it back to him. As Team Black's, Team Black's defense can't get it out of the zone still. 26 for Orange. 28. I beg your pardon. We'll hold on with some possession. To the corner. Goes there for 46. A shot that goes wide. It goes wide to the right post. And off the backboards and out. The saucer pass going behind the net. As 28 will try to snipe it back into his reach, and now he has it on the circle with a wrist shot that goes wide. Cleared past the line. Small line change for both squads here. 28 looking for some help as he's going to try to go around the defense right towards the net as he couldn't finish and get the shot on the side of the cage as he was unable to capitalize on those several opportunities he just had. As it remains 2-1, to one, that close from being tied at 2. 64 flipped off a non -high, actually it was a high, it was a high stick, it was, I wasn't sure if it was for a brief second but the official says it indeed was and so they're going to stop play with 13 minutes and counting remaining in the period. Actually, I should say game. It's not a it's not a full game with three periods. These, are, these tournament games are only about 26 minutes a, a piece. Landon McRae on the draw towards the left wing, trying to get in front there for Duncan Mitchell Tree, trying to knife back for it. As 75 made the play to 31, and Team Orange will try to go on an attack on offense. If they can get to it, and they cannot. Icing is the call. This is won by Team Orange on the defensive side, 64. That was Duncan Mitchell Tree trying to make a check. Tanner Alt has it, trying to get it to him as six will rush with speed, moving with acceleration as 49 is trying to catch up to him to stop the play. Mitchell Tree takes him down as six will get it towards 82 off the boards and comes and comes back towards the ice as they're going to continue to play on and forward. Mitchell Tree's pass towards Tanner All couldn't connect on the play. It was out of his reach. With 11 and a half remaining in the first period, still 2-1 to one in favor of Team Black as Team Orange was the last one to score as they're down only by one. Six through in there from the left side. Here's a shot there by 31. Actually, he fanned on it. Seemed to have an opportunity. Lost, losing control as he lost it yet again. This puck goes past the blue line. As Team Orange, we're going to get another offensive attack. 28, a shot that goes over the crossbar, way wide. 28 will try to get another chance. 31 steals it away. There's a bit of a bit of a pile of players near the high slot. As now, Mima, here comes six for Orange. Turns on the corner, moves to the point as he needs some help. Lost it, and it's, it's stealing away by Team Black. They're going to try to hurry up if they can on 2 on none. Here comes Ethan Myrick. He scores! As Team Black now with a 3-1 to one lead. This comes back in front there for Team Arts. They couldn't get in, into the net there. As they have a big 3-1 to one lead right now. Trying to go for another one as that shot is fanned down. That was 26 with the chance. But he come up empty on that opportunity. 82. Off the high boards in the stanchion to get it past the line. Myrick, the recent goal scorer, lost it as this will be an offside. Looking for Myrick as he turned it over. But luckily from his perspective, that was an offside. 52 will backhand it as this goes to 49. A player for Team Orange falls down. He actually has no number on his jersey. For all you can see from here, appears to be A-OK. -okay. Player for Team Arch skated all the way back here defensively as he couldn't get it away from 47. 47 centering beat in front there for 40 for uh, 64. Couldn't get the shot away. 28 will stop. Pedals around the point. Lost it away. Team Black will bring it back the other way. Here comes 47 as this goes near the pads of Team Arch's goaltender. He's moving around his crease. 
A little less than eight and a half remaining in the game. It's three to one, the team black in the Phantoms youth four before tournament of 2023. Here comes 28, 28 with a loose stick near him for our team black. It was one of their defenders. As 28 fans on the shot, another fan shot. We've seen it quite a bit over the last few minutes. Sawyer Marstower for Team Orange now goes to the bench for some rest. As 49 waving his glove, waiting for reinforcements to go deep as it goes off a Team Black stick into the corner. This will not be icing as it's waved off. 75 shoved there by 64 as Team Marge makes the right wing pass to 31. 31 makes a nice play around 26 as he's going to wait and ro roam right behind the net. Six on the point. Resting one to flex towards the pads there of Team Black's goaltender as he flexes his right pad to get it out of harm's way. But it's still in the zone. Mitchell Tree trying to get a left wing pass. Deflects and stays in play. Went off the high glass. It did not, get all, it did not go off the safety netting. Six with 31 will turn. Too many defenders around him now. It's Duncan Mitchell Tree with the puck, telling his teammates to get moving. This pass is uncoordinated to 26. As initiating the play is 75 towards the line, 46. As this puck appeared to have gone out of play, and it did. It went into Team Black's bench. Ethan Meyer is going to go right out to a breakaway, trying to make a nice. Trying to make a nice Peter Forsberg play as he just couldn't finish the right idea. Almost the right execution, but he just missed the net. Here comes Myrick again with another chance on the corner. And for, for 27, that is, they couldn't make the play. He couldn't coordinate the puck to his stick. Looking a little frustrated, too. I think Myrick might be laboring something. He seemed to be in a little distress not too long after he tried that play. As his tip right front, and then they score! Tie game! No, sorry, not tie game. Oh, I lost count of the score. Whoops, it's 3 to 2. It's not 2 to 2. Whoopsie, whoopsie, my bad. It is 3 to 2. My bad. Maybe Team Harns will tie the game to correct it anyway. I beg your pardon for that. I'm a little rusty. I haven't done any games in a few months. Tanner Alt. Two-time champion for the Concrete Kids with JV and Varsity this year. As Team Black is only up by one now. Alt is going to backhand it towards the backboard to 82. Towards center ice. And it's brought back the other way by Landon McRae. Five minutes to go in the game. McRae passes it over 27. He scores! Team Black reacquires a two-goal lead. It's four to two, four and a half, and counting remaining in the game. Lendon McCray going past the line, but who just had an assist still on the ice. We'll shoot it all the way back towards their own end. Team Black will move on yet another chance. Here comes a three on two. Nice move by Yo, go right to the net as he went control. Rebound, they score. Two goals in less than a minute. 57 got it in there on the second try in front of the uh, front of the goaltender in the blue paint. It is five to two. Team Black with three minutes, 42 seconds and counting to go. 52 as T Team Orange was within one not too long ago, and now they're down by three. So they got to get moving if they wish to survive. They're going to need all the offense they could get. We'll keep our eyes on their goaltender if they're going to decide to pull him or not to go on a 5-on-4 go advantage since this is a 4-on-4 four tournament for these games. 47. We'll make a pass in front, but nobody there for Team Orange to tip it the other way. And come for getting ready for Team Orange for the second 16 AA game, which will happen right after this one. And we know our game between Team Orange and Team Black. 28. Behind his net. There he's shoveled away by 47. Stone moves with speed. 
as he has to shove the other player with 28, two 28s under the ice, one for Team Orange and one for Team Black. As his shot back towards the other way, passed in front towards the line, as this is backhanded towards the corner. 28, waving to the camera as Sawyer Marsteller. Wonder why he's celebrating. His team is down by three. Then again, these games are not taken super seriously. Now, are they? 75, threw one there for a shot, and they score! Doing the shotgun celebration. We'll see who that is once he turns. It, it was Sawyer, was it? Right after he waved at the camera, he scores the goal for Team Orange with a vintage celebration. Forget, I can't, I can't think of the name right on the top of my head, but there was a player for the Rangers that did that celebration. I, think, I believe it was in the early 2000s, if not late 90s. I'll, I'll insert that clip right here as this will be an offsides. This puck is shot towards 57. Will lob one that turned it over to six for Team Orange as they're down by two. Here's a cross move. They score. It's a one goal game. Are you kidding? You're going to want to watch that one again and again. It was McNally. Of course I did. We've seen that in Michigan. We've seen that by Trevor Zegers. And now you've seen it by McNally. As it hits the iron. Team Orange down by one. I guess they have life after all. 37 seconds of remaining and counting. Six trying to get past the line. Empty cage now for Team Orange. It is five on four. 30 seconds and counting to go. They're down by one. They're trying to maintain control. Time's still winding down as Marstower falls down. He was going to get a shot as he can't believe it. Empty cage now for Team Black for the finisher. Scores! Tanner Alt. And that will do it. Sawyer Marsnauer is still down on the ice. He's not hurt. He's just upset that he was not able to get a shot on that. Not to say it was guaranteed to go in, but he can't believe it. And everyone for Team Black is actually patting his head, trying to say, hey, it's okay, Sawyer. It's just a little scrimmage. <laughs> he's just playing around. He's still down. As he will eventually get up and probably have a hard time sleeping. Even though it's not guaranteed that was going to go on. But anyways, the game is over. Team Black wins 6-4. to four, And I am about to do the second game for 16U. So I will be back for that. <laughs> there is Nick Humphrey wearing 15 for Orange as he does for the Southern Way of Spartans. Not sure if that was intentional with that number on that jersey. Or is this a coincidence? Now where you're in the second game of this Knicks hockey broadcast of the Phantoms Youth 4v4 tournament. Just like the last game, this is also 16 double A, except these are two different teams. Yes, it's Team Orange versus Team Black again, but these are completely different squads. The first group for 16 double A, Team Black defeated Team Orange 6 to 4. Things got really dramatic at the end as 13 gets a shot and goes wide. And just one thing I wanted to clarify I'm sorry if I seemed pretty rusty in the first game I did for tonight. I haven't done any games in a little while, but this, that's another reason why I'm doing these, just to get back on track. But enough about me, back about the game. 68. Wax at it. As he's looking for a line change, we had a we had a member of the Spartans for Team Black playing last game, Ethan Myrick. In this game, we have Nick Humphrey for Team Orange. And now they'll sail it back to center ice, 67 off the boards. As this goes to 54, 54 will chase for it, flip one towards the line. As this goes off the pad of Team Black's goaltender, as a player for Team Black goes down in the corner, that it's 38. He has a bunch of snow on the lower pad, on the lower on the lower part of his body. As this try by 44 is blocked on route. Scaling the zone there, as this goes right to the net of Team Black's goaltender, as he manages to hold on. 24 minutes and counting remaining in the game. It was with Bethlehem Area School District this year that switched over the goal and gloved down by Nicholas Humphrey looking for, how should I say, a redemption year. D 
didn't have a didn't have the best of a season last year for the Spartans or Phantoms youth, but he's got another chance to redeem himself, at least getting back on his footing tonight. Fan favorite of the channel, McCray Ross, will not be with Phantoms youth this year. He will be playing for the Philadelphia Blazers. He'll play a few games against Phantoms youth in this building. The Tosi centering pass will try to move right by as it couldn't get shot. Here's the Tosi, nice right pad stop. It went off the blocker of 71 for Team Orange in goal. Couldn't get his name either. As this is kept into the zone. 36 in front there for 68. As his foot went right towards the goal. Nice stop there by Team Orange's goal. The bucket still loose in the crease as he'll whack it out of harm's way, at least out of the goal for now. 70 on the forward check there for Team Barnes. We'll get it to neutral ice. I was just having a conversation with Spartans forward number two, MJ Edwards, forever a legend of the team, for his unforgettable performance in game two of the LVSHL finals this year. When the Spartans were down three to nothing against the kids, Edwards scored the tying goal, and he scored the overtime winning goal, in which I yelled the famous call, MJ Edwards. After the game, he broke a soda can with a key and drank it from the side. There's a, I actually have a famous clip of that as well on my other sparring videos. And he's going to be playing in the next Phantoms Youth game. There'll be two more after this, both involving the 18U teams. We'll see if I'll be doing those. Nothing, no other, actually no goals were scored when I was just talking to him with about 18 and a half to go in the first period. Dominic Natosi missed the net with a shot. Raymond there by 36 on the side of the net. And it goes off of it, off of it and wide. Here's Natosi again. Gains possession. Throw in there across the under the legs of 67 for Orange. Natosi will get it to 37. Towards the point out of the reach of 36 as this puck goes all the way down towards the ice. And this will not be icing since it was caused by Team Black themselves. So as I said during the first game, I am going to Kutztown University. I'm leaving next week. Hold on, I thought for a second. 13 gets a shot, same in my team black. So, for, I'm go so I'm going to Kutztown next week. I graduated from Lehigh Carbon Community College last spring with an associate's degree in sport management. I am transferring to Kutztown as a junior, and I'll be pursuing my bachelor's degree in sport management. So I'll be going there for at least two years. And yes, I am going to be broadcasting games for their hockey teams. They have teams in the AAU for D2 and 3. And matter of fact, the first game, or I should say first games of the season for D2 is going to be in Lake Placid, New York, home of the 1932 and 1980 Winter Olympic Games and more famously home of the Miracle on Ice. And I will be going with that team to broadcast those games at Lake Placid. I, I actually have permission from the rink itself, so I'm going to be going to that, and it's going to be such a unique opportunity, not just to broadcast Kutztown, but just to go all the way up there in a historic building where famously Al Michaels and Ken Dryden broadcasted that Miracle and Ice game over 40 years ago. So that's going to be a unique opportunity. What a way to start with Kutztown, I must say. One thing I just wanted to mention, too, for hockey broadcasting in the Lehigh Valley for the future, as far as what I'm going to do, the amount of games I'll be doing in the Lehigh Valley from this point forward will be much more limited. It will not be like it was this year. As meanwhile, Team Black brings it in. 49 as that shot goes wide to flex off Team Orange's goaltender. So for games in terms of Phantoms youth, don't count on really me doing much with them this year. I'd certainly love to, but I have other things to do for school. And as for the Lehigh Valley Scholastic Hockey League, I do want to do some games for Southern Lehigh, but that'll be about it for now. And that's something the Tosi's turned away, my Team Orange's netminder. So I'll do a few games for Southern Lehigh, and if the playoffs are in the PPL Center again, if I have time, if the Phantoms give me permission to do games in their rink once again, I will gladly do that again, but we'll see when we get there. For now, we'll do this game instead. For now, we'll do this game. As we're trying to get a shot there, here's a pass to two, waiting, shooting, and they score! Off the top bar and in, it's two! And ironically, that makes it two to nothing! Here comes Nicholas Humphrey, the man on a mission. Humphrey, the, the giant Ravens fan, the biggest one you will ever meet. 
and the biggest fan of Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson. Today, the Ravens actually signed Jardavion Clowney, and that's your brief football update on this hockey channel. To my fans, I hope you've enjoyed some of my projects and videos I made during this offseason, and by offseason I mean summer, from the Spring League videos to the Rick Jenner video that was just released, to my Flyers Chuck Fletcher video, to my videos on the on my time with the Southern Leroy Spartans, our story of Spartans hockey, the four-part documentary. As Team Black will get it past the center ice line. Nice play by 70 to get it to 44 with a shot that flex and goes towards the side of the boards. Centering pass for a shot and that but it's blocked in front and down. Two to nothing, Team Black with 11 minutes remaining in the game. I'm so used to saying period, but since these are only small little, little 4v4 games, that's what these are called for tonight. Just games. 14 to loss. The puck and back comes Team Black the other way. They're trying to get a move with speed. It's nearly it's nearly taken away. 49 gets it across for a centering shot. Blocked in front by 44. Another shot goes off the left pad. Goaltender's pads. It's 38. We'll pick it back up. 38. Side of the net, center in front there, trying to whack towards the net as it's blocked in front by a defender. Another chance tipped off a stick of 68. A few players from Team Orange nearly collided with one another. Four checked by a stick, 13, shoved by 36, carried back in by Team Black. They'll get us some reinforcements on the back end. As 13 is going to burst with speed, getting it past the blue line on the right circle. Racing the shot goes high and wide, way over the net. Out of here, but stayed in play. 13, 68 on the point. He needs some, might need some little help there as he's got so many players for Team Black around him as that they'll get the puck past him. Here comes Dominic Natosi. good defensive play. Shot on net anyway, save me by 71 in goal for Team Orange. 37. We're we'll trying to move him with some speed getting past the blue line. Look at him go. 37 walking right to the net as he couldn't score there. A nice save is made by 71. Taking a lot of room on that left crossbar. 37. All the way to the other side of the ice. A little less than nine minutes remaining in the game. It is two to nothing in favor of Team Black as they'll try to go on another attack. Nick Humphrey. The member for Phantoms Youth 16 AA and the Spartans gets it over the line. He's going to be a junior this year at Southern Leah High School. Speaking of Humphrey, here he is, has the puck on his forehead, lets it go what I've been looking as it goes off the glass. It was a knuckling puck up into the air as it comes back down. Two who has the second goal of this game, ironically, matching the number on the back. Gets it into the zone. 44. Couldn't get past the defender as Team Black will do it. Turn it over. That goes up the back of 43. And the puck is rolling. And 70 will try to get it out of the way. As 2 will bring it back past the line. On the right side, trying to make a nice play on 44. The puck comes into the air. It's grabbed by 44, who throws it away. And they score. It's 2 again. I believe 44 for Team Orange. Illegally grabbed the puck. It looked like he held it in his hands and threw it. You can touch the puck and bring it down, but you can't necessarily throw it. I think he did that, but they let it go. But it seemed like that was almost instant karma on him for breaking that rule as Team Black, in result of that mishap, makes it 3 to nothing. Can't say the name of the player on the top of my head, but there was a game in the mid-2000s between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Florida Panthers at the old Igloo Stadium. And there was a player for the Panthers that literally grabbed the puck on the penalty kill and threw it all the way down to the other side of the ice. It's one of the biggest bloopers you will ever see in a game. And obviously he got a penalty for that. That was not as crazy as what we just saw. I mean, I mean, what we saw just recently wasn't as crazy as that play, which I'll insert here. But... This is worth mentioning. Shot there by 13 off the side of the board. So a little less than six minutes left. It, it is three to nothing team black as 43 on the left point. Flings went across there for 13. Deeks around back in shot goes off the shoulder. I believe it might have been blocked. Hard to see from this perspective, but regardless, it stays out of the net as team black still has the shutout for now. Skiing the way is 49. He'll try to gain the zone. 
Line change on the back end for Team Black as they have new defenders waving in on the line. 21 at center, stolen away by Dominic Natosi. And now Team Black will try to move on a three on two. They're going right to the net. Nice stop made by 71 again. Natosi's waiting on the circle. Now he's coming along towards the point. They'll try to jab it away. So many sticks going after the puck as now Team Orange will get possession. Well, they'll have to retrieve it back. Over the line he comes as the wave of Team Black's defenders got in the way. Back it goes to 13. Twirls on the backhand pass on the corner. As Team Orange, unfortunately, one of the biggest reasons why they're down by three and still have a goose egg on the board. They really have not been able to set up for long offensive opportunities. They've had a few, but they haven't kept it in the zone for a good amount of time. Not as consistently as Team Black as a official falls down. I believe he ran into Dominic Natosi. He appears to be okay. I do not know his name, but I actually had a whole conversation with that official before the game. He was telling me he was one of the four officials at the PPL Center for the Scholastic Playoffs this year. 54 jabbed away by Natosi. It's still kept into the zone. As this goes right to that save made by Team Orange's goaltender, that was 71. Now I'm going to let the camera record the rest of the way. This is I'm going to say hi to some of the players for Phantom Zoot 18 AA. So I will see you for that game. And now we are in game three of the Phantom Youth 4v4 tournament. The first two games were for 16 AA. The first game for 16 AA, Team Black defeated Team Mar 6-4. In the second game, it was a 4-0 win for Team Black. Those were two different teams. And now it's Team Orange versus Team Black again. But this time, we have moved the age up to 18 AA. And just to mention before this begins, this will be the last game I'm going to do in the Lehigh Valley for quite a while. Again, I'm going to Kutztown pretty soon. And I just feel it's best that tonight's the last night I do games here before I leave. Leave on a high note. As now we are underway, it's Team Black versus Team Orange. As the music keeps going on, it's playing jump, jump, jump. It's still going. And now it's being still kept on. I, will, I hope they keep it out during the game. It makes it more fun. 43. Almost feels like a movie with the music being played. I kind of like that vibe. And now it's being lowered as we continue to play on. 32 on the left side. Now the music begins to turn down completely. And now it's gone. Enjoyed the fun while we lasted. This goes off the skate of two for Team Black, who curls it back towards his stick and goes now towards... 58 as the music is now going to continue on. It's backhanded back into the zone. So we've had Ethan Myrick, Nick Humphrey, and now we have MJ Edwards playing. All Spartan players currently still with the team. Edwards is wearing number 32 in black with the white cage. He has told me he will play again for them this year, which is good to know. This pass goes to the left side there of 19. 45 scoops it out of the way. And they'll try to rush it past the center ice line. Stephen Godjula, three, tips it towards the blue line. As 38 will take it for Team Orange. And now it's taken away by Team Orange. They'll move it back toward the circle and they'll check there. Here's a shot, see me there by 80 for Team Black with the right pillow pad stop. Thirty-seven. Whiteland feed to forty-five. He's going to get towards twenty-one. Couldn't connect with the play. They'll have to chase for the puck all the way down to the other side of the ice. Icing is the call. It seems they are going to keep the music on. I'm not going to complain about that one bit. This puck is brought back across the line there by 26. Nice pass behind himself for 43 as 45 for Team Black tipped it out of the reach. Now it goes to the corner. Godzilla in front there for 55. Actually, that, that's the real Godzilla. Got the little mixed up there for a second as Krem for Team Orange, who's the goaltender in net, trying to sweep it out of harm's way. Godzilla's pass. And here comes Team Orange on a four on two. They'll get a wrist shot, they score! 38, and it's one to nothing. It's, it went past the wickets 
of 80 for Team Black. He seemed to be a little bit of out of position on that play. And Team Orange strikes first. It's 1-0. Tyler Glenn will go for the faceoff for Team Orange. Speaking of Glenn, here he comes. Glenn with a shot on the save. It's made by 80. Puck is still loose as it is not going as two. We'll have it on defense for Team Black. We'll backhand it off the twig there of 19. Now it's 58, trying to escape Glenn. This music is making this game a lot more fun if you can hear it. 58 shot, and that goes way out of here. It's not baseball. You don't. It's not like baseball when you hit it out of the park. It's a home run. It's out of play. So that's going to cause a faceoff to be started on the left circle. 20, a little less than 23 minutes in the game. It is one to nothing. Team Orange. The goal coming from 38. Just like the last two games, no roster sheets. You get the idea. If you don't, you just follow along. Now, 38. I do not know his name, but I noticed during the during the pregame that he was wearing shades on his on his eyes actually, and he had some really cool hockey tape. He had flames as hockey tape, and he kind of looks. Pretty cool while doing so, and funny that he gets the first goal of the game. Actually complimented him, too. Glenn, the nearest player from ours to it, as it's whacked off the glass. You can hear it from, you can hear the puck hanging the glass from here. Glenn to Stephen Godjewel, has 25 in front of him, getting an edge. It goes off the, believe it, went off the mask of 80 and that. A chance in for 38, this puck is flipped right towards the camera view. As it's blocked away by 25, backhands it towards the boards. Gaudreau just keeps it in. That knuckle puck bounces off the stanchion and goes right back to the corner. Stolen away, but now here's 26. Orange keeping up the offense. Pass there, there to Glasses. A shot save made by 38. That's who I'm going to call 38 from now on. Glasses. Yeah, we'll go with that. Glasses has the first goal of this night. Has he got another chance? few moments ago. He now goes to the bench for some rest. Off this tie-up. Backhanded by 25 to 37. Going back the other way is 21. Trying to get it past the blue line. 25 for Team Black. At center going past the line. He's going to turn back around. As it's And now Team Black will have to chase for it. It's 37 on defense. Line change for Team Orange. On the ice now is a dangerous player, number 51, Tyler Glenn. His tall stature absolutely stands out whenever he's on the ice. Makes him so easy to identify, if I'm, if, if I'm going to be honest. As Glenn is now on the right wing, he does not have the puck. As the puck is brought into the zone there by 43, this bouncing puck goes off the stanchion, and Glenn will gain, try to go for some control here. Forty-five at center, going in, going into Team Orange's territory, as he's going to go right to that, trying to go right between the legs of Krem. He's trying to go short side actually, and it goes behind the net, but not into it. This will be an icing against Team Orange. Team Black is tied the game. It's MJ Edwards. Edwards, I must apologize. I just missed the goal. I was just checking a notification. I, I had to unpress record for a second. I am sorry I missed that. Hopefully you get another goal and this time maybe I'll get it. Here comes Edwards. Hit the shot goes wide. Sweep back the other way. Team Orange will try to get it back to the corner. Glasses was going for it for Orange. And now it's 58. 58 around a few defenders. Didn't have it on the right side. And now Team Orange will move on a 2-1-1. -on -one. They have wingers. Shot saved made by 80 with the glove. Snagging it right out of the air and hangs on. A friendly hug for two players. One for Team Orange and Black. That's 19 and 58. After that shot attempt on goal, we are tied at one apiece. 
18 minutes and counting to go in the game. Three versus 45, and the faceoff is one. 21 at center. We'll maneuver around towards the boards. Glasses will get the puck as behind his own zone. Godzilla, this music is getting really catchy now. As now Team Orange will go past the line. They'll have another chance. It's a two on three broken up in front. Puck is not on side, so they'll have to regroup. Glenn has it at center. 21 off the boards. Godzilla flips one towards the circle. As now Team Black will assemble with their New lineup, and here's MJ Edwards on the ice. He does not have the puck. He's on the left side. Now at center, Edwards gets towards the puck as it's tipped away from his reach. Tyler Glenn going past the blue line, trying to get around the defender, trying to back one right to the net as no rebound wasn't there. There was a player, 43, but he couldn't jab it in. Tyler Glenn threw it across for a shot on that. Is that the tipped wide? Two will now move with an energy boost. He's got Edwards on the way. Got it to Edwards. Edwards with the go for another one. And a stop is made by Krem. Outlet pass to Tyler Glenn. Two on one for Orange. Another break here. Here's a wrist on save me by 80. And he's just going to squeeze it to hold on. That's kind of funny. If you look at the scoreboard, it says shots on goal 99 to 5. And I believe that means it's referring to Team Orange. That is definitely not right, not at all, but still pretty funny anyway. Funny thing is, they weren't really keeping track of the shots on goal earlier. Strange how that's on now. And now it's been updated. Shots on that, it's 5-2 to two in favor of Team Black. 26 will chase for it. He's behind his own goal. Glasses to 19. Flips one to center rise. As 58 getting a nice play, going in past the line. 58 pass it up for a shot. And a save is made by Krem. Puck is losing the blue paint, and it stays out. Beckham team arms the other way. It's Glasses. He's got some reinforcements shooting. He scores! He's got another one! Glasses! And Team Orange retakes the lead. It's two to one. And as I see that we're getting a goaltending change. 80 is done for the night. And I, it appears to be Garrett Wolf. Now in for Team Black. He's very familiar with those sports goggles he always wears. As Team Black gets a bit of a change. I don't I do not believe Team Orange has any other goaltender, so they're gonna stick with the Krem. Off the space of his gut, Jewel just tips off the stick of a defender and out of play. Godzilla off the boards will go for it behind his net. As this pass is not going to anyone, now goes to 21. We I made a spooky burst out of nowhere. It's his shot is stopped by Krem. Team Orange on yet another chance. They'll try to get around 58 as it's 43 on the circle. Falls down on one knee as they couldn't get a shot right to the net. They try to get it towards it, but not into it. The battle for, for it right in front of the camera view. This puck is still loose. 43, 58 will have it on the fence. On the right wing now. 21 going to the bench for some rest. 58 will bring it in all by his lonesome. As he takes down a player for Team Orange, this puck is still behind the net. It comes free as Krem moves to the left post. 45 with a wrist shot blocked in front. And now Team, here comes Tyler Glenn moving it all alone. Glenn! No! He couldn't finish and he fanned on the back hitter. Threw one there, and that shot is fanned by Glasses. That close from getting the hat trick. And Glenn even closer to getting a goal for himself. Two big mishaps for Team Barnes. 
They're not going to look back on that. Uh, Team Black can get back into it. Here comes MJ Edwards. Has he missed the goal? 45 on the corner. Chasing after the throw was towards the 26. And it's now Gorjula. Lost the puck. And 45 knifefully takes it away. Hits a shot towards the net. And a save is made by Krem. Where's the puck? It's cleared out the other way. A lot of people didn't know where it was. Icing is waved off. 12-20 and counting to go in the game. 2-1. 25. Stops. As he's going to move around from the corner. 25 going right towards the side of the angle of the cage. And now it's 52. He's got some passing options. He'll bring it past the blue line himself. 52 on the left side. Gets it right there for a back shot. Save me by Garrett Wolf. That came from three. Wolf getting some action here. Meanwhile, it's 45 on the right side. Fans on the shot as this puck is rattled behind the goal towards the left corner. 37 fans on the shot. Passes it anyway as this goes out of play and over the glass. 11 and a half and counting to go in the game. It is 2-1 to one, Team Orange. All three games that I've done for tonight have been pretty good. I mean, I know we're not done this game for ATAA, but they've been all been pretty good, entertaining games overall. Although, obviously, because of the difference of age of 16 to 18, you can see how much faster these players are compared to the 16A, 16AA players. Not to say that they're slow, but 18AA is definitely an increase of acceleration. As they're going to pass it to 43. At center rice, loses his balance on his two knees, and now it's 21 on the left side. 21 will hold on towards the high slot, now to the right circle. He's gonna stop and slow down. Lost possession of the biscuit. Also wise known as the puck, I'm trying to term there. 58 will get it back the other way. They'll try to get around to two. And now Tyler Glenn. Here's a three on two for Team Arch. Here's they come the other way. It's Glenn off the shoulder. Puck comes into the air. Gravity brings it down. They're going to keep the play on. It was not hit by a high stick. And now it's 52. Two drinks off. Nice glove save made by Garrett Wolf. 43. Wax at it. Gives it to Tyler again with a shot. Off the glove again of Garrett Wolf. He seems to hesitate, not being sure for a brief second where it was. Now it's Glenn. They score! It goes past the wickets of Garrett Wolf under his two legs. Team Marge has scored yet again. It's Tyler Glenn. MJ Edwards touched the puck. And now back comes Team Marge on yet another chance. And that goes wide of the goal. The shot came from 19. And 45, nice play to get the puck away from Godzilla. Moves on the right side. Pass from across to MJ Edwards. They couldn't connect the dots on that passing play. Here's Edwards again, shooting, blocked in front there. There's a bunch of bodies in front of the goal. As now this puck is trying to be kicked down to center ice. And now here comes Godjula. Godjula going past the line. Has some help, Godjula centering pass towards 26. Looking for a better opportunity to shoot or make a play. Lost possession, lobbed back to MJ Edwards, who has a goal tonight. Trying to go for yet another. I apologize once again to Edwards for missing your goal. If you get another one, I assure you, I won't miss it this time. 58. This music's making this game so much more fun. Oh, for a cross move, that was way out of the net. Way, way far from the net did not work out. We had our cross move goal, Michigan goal in the last game. There was an attempt there for Team Black, but this time it failed. Twenty-five off the boards towards MJ. It's taken away by Steven Godjua. Godjua on the toe drag lost the puck. One-handed by a defender for Team Black. It's touched by Godjua. They'll go on a two-on-one against the puck. Twenty-five trying to get out of the zone and gets it past the blue line. And now, t now three for Team Orange has it on the left side. Three's going to wait. Three's going to shoot. And three's denied by Garrett Wolf, who fluffs over the cover of the puck up with six and a half remaining in the game. 
Off the space of Team Arch, get a shot. Same man, Garrett Wolf, rebound, they score! Wolf got a piece of it with his head with the first try. 43 for Arch, whacked it in on the second attempt. And Team Arch extends the lead, four to one. Six minutes and counting remaining in the game. And sniped away, Team Arns having a really nice performance. They're up by three, but there's still time left on the clock, so they shouldn't let go of the gas pedal until the game is officially over, which it is not yet. Here's a shot blocker saved by Garrett Wolf. That came in front. As 21 on the right wing is gonna try to go right to the goal. Save me by Krem. Five minutes and 15 seconds and counting to go. This will be an offside against Arch as they get the puck into the net, but play was already blown dead. Tyler Glenn, nice pass. Here comes Team Orange. Blocker saved me by Garrett Wolf came, coming from 52. That was not, uh, it is Tyler Glenn now. Center in front there towards 43, 45 for Team Black gets it instead. Garrett Wolf is just down trying to hope his team can come back. As 45 a shot, save me by Krem. Puck is still loose in the crease. Where is it? It's behind the goal. Team Arns getting desperate. I mean, Team Black, excuse me, getting desperate as they are down by three. Glenn at center ice gets the opposition pass. Going past the line, he's got a winger, makes a nice swirling play. Glenn, seven in front, they score! 26! What a play by Glenn! Nice play by number 51, Tyler Glenn. He's twirling around as he went past the blue line. Made a nice pass, and it's 5-1. to one. A little less than four minutes to go in the game. Like I was saying earlier, this is the last game I'm going to broadcast in the Lehigh Valley for quite some time. I hope you guys enjoy my content throughout the year. I certainly have enjoyed your feedback, and of course, I've loved the games just like this one. So thank you guys for all of that, and I wish you guys luck in your futures as I will try to pursue mine. And of course, you guys will still be able to watch my future games as I'll be doing it for Kutztown University this year. I'll keep in contact with teams in the Lehigh Valley occasionally. Besides that, thank you to Hockey and the way I vow. You guys were all great, and I, I wish you guys all luck, so thank you. But with that sound well stuff done, we'll just enjoy the rest of this game. A little less than three minutes. It is five to one. This music's amazing. MJ over to the front for a shot by 45, and Krem makes the stop. Puck is past the blue line. 58 brings it on an onside, but no, it was offside. He thought it was onside, but he came in past the line just a little bit too early. But it's okay. Team Orange will fan for it on the corner. It's three. He'll go for it. He shoveled there towards the corner. It's loose near the Zamboni door. Comes three to two. Two with 21 and 58 as passing options and it's forwards coming onto the ice too. 21 with a shot goes wide and then I have the accuracy but a decent amount of power. Now Team Orange has it. What will they do here? A move on the wing for a shot. Stopped in by Garrett Wolf. Rebound. Oh, what a stop by Wolf. Another shot goes past his five hole and away from the blue paint. Making a tandem of stops there is the Igor, Igor Sisterkin imitator. Back comes Team back the other way. They score. 58. And Team Black gets at least one thing positive towards the end of the game. They're still down by three, but they at least get at least they get that behind the net. It's five to two. Team Orange. 58 with the shot deflects and goes out of play. So last minute to go in the game. Like I was just saying, thank you guys for a great year broadcasting the Leah Valley from the LVSHL to Phantoms Youth to whatever else it may be. You guys are fun. I love you and just thank you for all your support. Time's just winding down here. 36 seconds of counting left. Team Black is hurrying up. They're going to just drop the puck. 10 seconds remaining. Face off is won by Team Black. 45. Trying to get away from Tyler Glenn. It's going to go to the neutral zone. Time's going to wind down. Team Orange wins 5 to 2. A fake fight at the end of the game between Krem and a player for Team Black. They're just bear hugging each other. And that's going to be the end of the game.
Thank you to everyone in Phantom Youth, the LVSHL, or just any fan of Knicks Hockey Broadcast for supporting the channel. That's all for me. From my voice to your ears, thank you for listening to Knicks Hockey Broadcast. Farewell.